exercise 22. In this exercise, we take a look at SOLIDWORKS functionality when dealing with imported three-dimensional models from any virtually any CAD system out on the market. IGES, which stands for Initial Graphics Exchange Specification, is one of the very first of those neutral file translators that's pretty much available with any CAD system that's out there. And it gives people the ability to transfer their solid and also 2D data between CAD systems. Now, what it doesn't bring over is the history tree. So, for example, all the features you can't edit very easily. It actually just brings over a dumb solid. But typically that what you can do with that solid is you could rebuild some of the parametric history as well as you could use it for molding. In this case, we have a uh, casting that's going to be missing some surfaces. And this is very common with I just files and that they're not perfect. They don't translate over perfectly all the time. So you might have to do a little work to get them into a watertight boundary condition to where they could be used for making a cavity or a core. So to begin, we're going to go ahead with a file open. And under SOLIDWORKS type files here, we want to find iGES. And we're going to go to the flash drive. CAD 121, sample files, exercise 22, and you'll find the E22 iGES. Open that up. It goes through a process of evaluating the geometry and brings it in. Now it brings up this little box for import diagnosis and our diagnostics. And basically this tool is a phenomenal little tool for trying to fix the repair geometry that comes over corrupted. On the left hand side you can see it's a surface imported. Surfaces aren't all that great to use all the time because it's not a watertight boundary condition. You can't, you can't make a mold from it very easily. So we need to try and fix this surface. What it's usually that means is that there's gaps or holes in it. Import diagnostics helps us with this helps identify where the holes and gaps are, as well as it has some tools that automatically try and fix those holes. If the holes are too big, it's forced to, we're forced to actually make some changes to it ourselves to fix it. So let's let it run through and hit yes. Now what it does is it shows us on the model with like a highlighted blue, the, the openings, like there's a gap right there. There's a gap in here as well. You can see the text on the opposite side. It's hollow basically. And there's one over here as well. It's an opening. So there's three that we've detected. And sure enough, there they are. One, two, three. And then there's these uh, faulty faces. It's kind of like putting a comb through your hair and you find the snags. And we're going to try and attempt to allow SOLIDWORKS to heal it. So hit attempt to heal all. Now fix the faces, meaning that it's stitched together the ones that weren't separated from each other, because it was a collection of surfaces to some extent. And now we still have the gaps. So we're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark and try and fix these ourselves. Good tool to have on here is the edges, shaded with edges. Now it's actually not too difficult, but what you do need are the surfacing tools. So right click on any of these tabs up here, find surfaces and then click on the Surfaces Toolbar tab. What we're going to use are typically a lofted surfaces. So we click on Lofted Surface, and then what you do is you just select the openings. So across from each other, click on these two. You can see it's starting to form that little surface. And then we select Guide Curves here, and select the opposite edges. And you can see it's actually creating that surface. Sometimes, though, those surfaces aren't very smooth, so there's some options to fix that. Some of the things we might want to do here is to make it smoother is the tangency. So over here on Edge 4, select Tangent to Face. And then click on Edge 3 and click on this Tangent to Face. And you'll see it starts to smooth it out. 
Now we'll go ahead and just hit the green check mark to apply. And we have a patch. We'll go through and do the same over here on this side. So lofted surface. Clear this. I'll select this as one of my profiles as well as this one over here. And then go to guide curves and select the two edges. Now if you don't fix this, it's going to look a little funny. It kind of flattens out a little bit at points. So again, you want to go with tangency to face on both of these. That helps transition it better. Hit the green check mark. And there's our another patch. And then there's one more that we have to patch over here. Go back to loft and surface. Click on Clear that selection by right clicking. Select this edge and that edge. And then the guide curves are basically the cross members. And use the tangency options. Try and smooth that transition a bit. Alright, at this point we have all the gaps closed, but if we try and use that tool, it's no longer available. It's usually a right click will bring up import diagnostics again to try and create a solid from it. So there's a couple things you can do. You can actually, the, the one of the better things I found than trying to, you can stitch it first of all. There's knit surface. You can select all the surfaces and try and make a solid of it. That's one way. Since it's an imported model, I prefer this. You just go to File, Save As, and save it as a parasol binary. Parasol binary is a very small compressed type um, and a file and essentially parasol is the native kernel built into SOLIDWORKS so it's like stripping everything out of it except the water type boundary condition. And So I'm going to just save that to my desktop for right now. Hit save and then I can close this. I'm going to go to file open change this to Parasolid now. And we should see on our desktop the E22XB, which is the Parasolid. Hit open. And then it's going to come with four surfaces. Remember there was the original one and then the three we added. Let's let it run import diagnostics and then attempt to heal all. And it's done. No faulty faces or gaps remain in the geometry. We have a, an official solid. Now this little option might pop up for feature works. This is a nice little tool that I want to go over in a second. But with this particular model, it takes too long. Uh, normally to run a feature works scan, it, it could take on a complex model up to an hour, depending upon how fast the computer is. Uh, so on a, uh, we're going to try it on a different one, so I'm going to hit no there. But again, just to look closer at this, it's all healed. It's a watertight solid. And you get the solid block there is imported. Now you can make a mold from that or do whatever you want. All right. Now what I want to show you now in this one is FeatureWorks. FeatureWorks is a nice tool. Again, when you import models, it's very useful. And I have a video on how this works. Well, not a video, I should say. I have a uh, PowerPoint. But I'm going to go to my CAD 121, Sample Files, Exercise 22. And I'm going to change it to Parasol Files. And I have some sample ones you can look at. And under Import Repair, you'll find a button and a sheet metal part. Let's go with the sheet metal first. Hit Open. And it's going to want to run import diagnostics. Go ahead and hit yes. There's no faulty faces. Now it brings up feature recognition. Notice the feature tree has no features. None of the holes, fillets, sheet metal parts, nothing is there. Let's go ahead and go to options and see what we could select here as far as setting this up. We're going to create a new file from this. As far as dimensions go, we can have it auto-dimension the sketches. 
using baseline, chain, or ordinate edges. So we want to place horizontal below, or above, or vertical. And we can also tell to add constraints to the sketches. So like tangency, parallelism, coincidence, things like that. Now as far as the uh, tool recognition order, you could adjust this. Like if you want to have holes checked first. Again, this could speed up the process a little bit. And uh, also make it a much more pliable model. And then the advanced controls just basically allow for different types of outlaw fail feature creation, perform body difference checks. So at the end, it verifies that it's correct. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK here. And hit Yes. Now on the left, it gives us more options. This is a sheet metal part, so let's click on sheet metal features. And we're going to let it automatically do it. You can interactively select through them. And we could select, we want to see holes. There's no ribs, especially in sheet metal parts, so I'm going to turn that off. There are extrudes, base flange, flange is possible in there. There's no hems, there might be an edge flange, there might be sketch bends. So we could have it search for these things. The more you add, though, the longer it takes to process. But what we have to do now is select a fixed face. The center surface is going to be a perfect fixed face because everyone, everything will unfold around it. So we can select that. Also, there's no revolves. And as far as holes, I'm going to turn off the holes as well. It will look at those as cut extrudes instead. Hopefully. Okay, we hit next up here. Let it run through. It's breaking down the part and trying to find as many features as it can. Now, there's certain things it wasn't able to find possibly. So we can tell to find patterns like with holes, linear, circular patterns, rectangular, to linear, next. Through linear patterns found. And we'll go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. Now it's rebuilding it as it believes it could have been constructed. I've seen this happen before where it actually the part gets lost. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'll have to try that one again. But anyhow, if you wanted to flatten this out, even though it lost the features on that one, we could go over here to select sheet metal toolbar, go to insert bends, select this as our fixed face. We'll set the 0.32, which is a nice sweet spot for the K factor. Hit apply. And you'll see now we can actually flatten out this imported model. Okay. Let's try one more model here. Let's go to File Open. And go to the Store and Go. Find your 121 folder, sample files, exercise 22, import repair, change it to parasolid again. We'll go with the button. Yes, we'll check it. Looks good. Yes, we'll run feature recognition. As for our standard features, we have some ribs inside here, as you can see. some other features like uh, select hole. I don't think there's any drafts. So I'll put in a volume condition in case. And fill some chamfers. Let's go ahead and hit next. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply and let it rebuild it as it sees that it might have been built. Alright, now what it did, it left a lot of junk on it. So 
certain things we could go and hide. You can see it's not too bad, but some of the fillets it wasn't able to recognize very well in these corners. So we might want to either edit those features and maybe remove some of them actually. So if I go to edit feature, find the edges that we don't want, which are most likely at the top here. Delete that one, as well as this one here. That. And this one. It says 0.59. Apply. Go to the fillet tool again, and we could just re add those. So sometimes you have to help it along a little bit. But now it's a parametric model. As you can see all the features, everything can be changed and edited. It has dimensions and relations to it. It's no longer a dumb solid. And that concludes this exercise.